Um, get going here uh, on on senior day. I'd be uh, it's always it's always one of those days that um, uh, is is tough uh, because you say goodbye goodbye to a group of guys. Uh, this year is uh, uh, probably especially challenging from the standpoint uh, for a couple reasons. One, my son's in it. Um, and and that's that's a little different. And secondly, uh, this is a group that um, laid a foundation and 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 helped build. It'll be a group I won't forget. Uh, not that I forget any of them, but this one this one in particular. They've been through a lot of hardships. There's been a lot of roadblocks, speed bumps, um, and and um, adversity. Uh, but a lot of growth, and to see someone like Andres Feliz, uh, Tyler, Sammy, uh, Kipper, uh, guys that have have played a lot, some that haven't played as much, but been an integral part uh, from leadership, from uh, the job they do in practice, uh, and they've been there and they've stuck with it. And uh, uh, this group is a big part of the character piece that we've tried to establish here with, with, with Illinois basketball. And, and uh, each one of them has a special place and, and has done great things uh, in, in, in their time here. And they've got their degrees. Uh, Tyler's case, he'll have his master's degree. Uh, so it's a, um, uh, it's a pretty special group. Uh, along with that, five managers um, were blessed uh, when it comes to the great managers. Uh, Patrick Biddle's our head manager. Uh, we go right on down the list with D.A., uh, Matty, um, who handled a lot of our video, uh, Robbie, uh, who am I missing, Macklin, um, that group of guys and, and, and gals, gal, uh, have been phenomenal uh, in, in the amount of time. They're the most selfless people on our campus. I say that <clears throat> Uh, from 6 a.m. to uh, whatever to minus 57 below, uh, unloading the unloading the bus to get it on the plane in Minneapolis to uh, the travels abroad, the time away, uh, all while being students and 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 active participants in in what is a uh, a lot of work. And uh, so I'm forever grateful to, the, to, to that group of guys and, and, and gals and manager and, and, and the job they do. So uh, be a great day. Be a great day for, for, for those nine or ten guys and, 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 and Maddie, um, you know, to, to remember uh, their time here at, uh, at, at Illinois and with our, with our program. <clears throat> You talked recently about Andres' winning in the past. We know his talent, but you also seem to be about what you're about with toughness and just who he is. How important was that to get someone like that early in your tenure and to get a veteran and, and all that he brought? Yeah, there was when – you're, when you're building, you're looking for winners and you're looking for people that can uh, amplify, magnify, copy – who you are and what you want to be, and 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 Andres has, has has done that. The other piece to that was he was a little bit older. He wasn't um, he wasn't a 17, 18 year old high school kid coming in here. Uh, he had experience. He had won a national championship, um, <clears throat> and that maturity has, has has helped a great deal. There were obstacles for him. Uh, the language, uh, learning another program. Uh, there, you know, it wasn't always it wasn't always easy for him, but his character and his toughness have always won out, and um, stood at the forefront of everything that the Dre stands for. And uh, you know, you talk about a young man with uh, maturity level being married. You talk about a, uh, a young man that has to to fight every day academically. Uh, you know, with the English language and 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 attend a world class university. Uh, and getting his degree in May. So, you know, it goes well beyond the basketball court with him. So, Brad Underwood, dad, handle tomorrow? Um, you know, I always get emotional anyway. 
Um, I don't know if I will be or not. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy for him that he's getting two degrees from here, uh, from this university. Um, you know, he's, he, he was a young man who's probably sacrificed a lot of his playing career to, to play for me. Uh, you know, he was recruited. Uh, he could have had other places to go. Uh, he wanted to play for me at Stephen F. Uh, he tore his ACL uh, in his senior year, uh, in the last, you know, right before the last game. Um, and then to uh, <clears throat> go with us to Oklahoma State, to then be here, and, and you know, it, it's, it, it, he's a better player uh, than, than people give him credit for being because he just hasn't been on the court at the highest level. But his value in the locker room, um, and then it's you know I say it every day. You're truly blessed when you can go to the court and see your son every day and dap him up and say hello and and uh, uh, kid around and have fun and enjoy the moments in locker rooms and enjoy the tears in locker rooms and and um, I you know so I I, I, I imagine I'll uh, I'm going to try to be really really happy. You know, for for him, because he's had you know, I think a very very unique experience, and you know, he he's had to overcome a lot uh, because of his dad. Three high schools uh, really kind of took him away from a lot of AAU basketball. Um, you know, there were a lot of challenges that that my kids, not just him, but my kids, have had to overcome because of of dad's profession. So, uh, but you talk about proud, I'll be all of that for sure. I would think maybe that was, was it a challenge for you in the sense that A, you wanted to spend time with Tyler, but B, knowing that he had turned down opportunities to play at, at different places. I mean, I guess what was that feeling like when it started to develop? Well, we talked about that at, in, in high school. And, um, you know, I, I never wanted Tyler to play basketball because I played or because I coached. And uh, I wanted him to play because it was a passion and it was something he loved. And, and, um, y he had to make those decisions on his own. And, you know, we, we did talk about it. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's no doubt if we had stayed at SFA, he would have been, or had he stayed, he'd be playing there. You know, he would, he would help teams at that, at that level. And uh, he's high IQ, he's, um, but he, he's, he's, he's also been a, a tremendous protector of his younger sisters. He's also, uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways was the man of the house uh, when I was gone and very, very protective of his mother um, and, you know, probably as good a big brother and probably as good a son as, as anyone could ask for. So, um, you know, through all those moves, I think he's always had a, a, a more personal family obligation than, than a basketball one. And, um, you know, he'd probably have to answer that part, but I think that's the case. I mean, he is, uh, he still calls his mom every day and texts with his sisters every day, uh, just making sure they're okay. <clears throat> just, uh, you know, watching Samson in like pregame warmups and just how physical he can dunk, just what has he brought, maybe just that every day in practice into this team? Yeah, and I, you know, you're talking about a, a elite athlete, I, and I say this a lot. You know, had had Sammy been at the Southland level, or I, I mean, a lower level, I mean, he was he was going to be a tremendous player. There are very few athletes, jumping wise, that can do what he does, um, and uh, you know, he's 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 turned into a physical specimen in the weight room. I mean, he's extremely strong. Uh, he can give us multiple looks uh, on the on the from the scout team. Uh, he's a young man who is who, who when I first got here to be very honest was a below average shooter who's now turned into a pretty good shooter. Uh, so he you know he's continued to work. He's uh, Sammy's everything that the student athlete experience is about. Great student and just a dedicated teammate and he's been a joy to have around he's been a joy to have in our locker room and and you know and then he works his tail off on the court and has as never causes a, a peep of a problem and just does what he's uh, what he's asked to do
You mentioned the language barrier twice in talking about Dre and the other day. You, you made a joke about Spanglish. Uh, in fact, he has really come a long way since he arrived on this campus. No doubt. In, turn, in terms of that language. And, and furthermore, he now has an American wife, an American child. And apart from a, maybe a speed bump in getting to Italy, he's kind of, uh, he's living the American dream. Um, would you talk about it, how much he's changed in terms of his... Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think it's it's really hard to not grow when you're at an institution like Illinois. And then when you're you throw the basketball piece on top of it, um, you know, it's it's there there's certain challenges there. You know, every coach can have their own terminology and understanding and and um, you know, what he grew up with maybe termed a different term than I use or that his junior college coach used or whatever. So there's compli there's complications with that. But, uh, you know, I always think to myself, what what would I be doing if I was in school at, at in, in the Dominican Republic and, and just learning Spanish? How would I succeed? And how frustrating that would be for me. Um, and And how tough you would have to be to persevere through all of that. And yet, over the course of time, uh, the, you're you're going to gain knowledge and you're going to gain understanding. And he's he's a very bright young man. He's a guy that um, you know picks things up very very quickly. His basketball IQ and feel have have helped him transcend on the court and and made that adjustment probably easier than on the academic side. But uh, uh, you know you're talking about a uh, a young man who's very very mature, a uh, young man who's very driven. And you know, I've always said this that that it didn't take very long to figure out whatever Andres does and whatever path he chooses beyond basketball. Uh, you want him with you. You want him on your side. You know he's going to make it, and and you don't ever have to you don't ever have to worry. He's, he's going to fight. He's got grit. He's smart. He figures things out, uh, and he and he does the right things, and and uh, and makes life's choices. That are correct, and and there's a maturity about that. So he's grown in a lot of ways. Brad, can you, can you kind of walk through Kipper's journey from the time you got here? He was, you know, his first your first season, he averaged double-digit scoring. Now, just kind of him embracing that role as a solid role player off the bench. Yeah, and I, you know, I think it's it's um, the evolution of of maybe how our program's grown. Um, I, I've I've always loved Kipper's. Personality, his 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 being, his his character, his. Um, uh, I think a lot was, uh, and I demanded a lot from Kip early. Um, and not that I don't now, but I've I, it, it's been. Uh, he was an integral part of that first group. It, there was carryover. He played half a season the year before. Uh, had had some success, um, you know, and and was 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 a solid piece for us but his his personality is the reason why I want to make sure he was back I thought he he was a guy that that, that fit and was uh, doing a lot of the right things off the court working in his, working hard at his academics work he loved to play he was always in the gym that's the one thing that will always stand out with Kip it still does to this day uh, and then for whatever the reason I mean kind of had a um, a lull his junior year and I, I I wish I could explain that, um, you know, and, and went through a shooting funk. Um, and probably with that came some decreased minutes. But um, his, his experience, you know, is, has, has allowed him to continue to stay on the floor. Um, <clears throat> you know, his leadership in the locker room, his buy-in. Uh, you know, Kip's always the guy with the smile on his face, uh, a hug, a pat on the back. Um, he, he's, he's a glass half full guy, you know, constantly. And, um, you know, so that, that's kind of transcended into his role this year. And he's been, he's been as valuable as anybody on our team this year. And, and, uh, uh, you're talking about a fifth year senior, a guy who's older and, uh, and, and been through a lot of battles and a lot of games. And, and I, I'm really proud of, of him earning his degree and his ability to, uh, to have kind of a, uh, a, a big part of this team in terms of a different role than what it initially was, and he's handled that great. Hey, Brad, in the back, um, 
You mentioned the double degrees for Tyler. Obviously, a, a bachelor's in uh, sociology, master's in uh, recreation sport tourism, RST. Would you mind, you mentioned a little bit, but would you mind expanding what that means to you and Susan, what, what he's accomplished academically off the court? Yeah, you know, it's, there, there's been a lot of challenges for Ty. And, you know, it, it's, it's um, um, we lose track of the simple things, you know. Um, and I'm going to back up just a little bit on that to his high school. Um, you know, he, he's, you know, what high school class reunion do you go back to? You know, um, you know, it's, it, you really don't have a, 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 a group of friends that you just dial in with, you know, and he graduated from, from Nacogdoches. He was there a couple years. Uh, he spent one year at Manhattan High School. He spent one year at Heathwood Hall and Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, the, here's the great thing about all that. You know, one of his best friends from Nacogdoches is now Quay Jones, our, 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 our uh, GA. Uh, he's got, he stays in tremendous, a ton of contact with his high school coach at Heathwood Hall in South Carolina. He's still got uh, Neil Gonta, who I've talked about at length, helped us with uh, our analytics stuff. Uh, his best friend from high school and man and growing up in Manhattan and and those are the relationships that are that are really important so as 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 a elite a university as we are I uh, I'm proud he, you know he went to SFA uh, he goes to Oklahoma State he's a business major he's ahead because he had taken a bunch of college credit in high school uh, and then he transfers here and guess what he can't get in the school of business uh, because of a transfer. So now it's, what do I do with my life? What do I do with, you know, and, and there's another, there's another hiccup in, in, in his roadblock and, and, uh, um, but I mean, he just plows ahead and, uh, uh, didn't let that deter him. And, and now getting a master's degree was important. Uh, you know, being around basketball is important. I, I, I think that's the, the, the path, the passion that he has, but I think all of those experiences and all of those stops have made him a, per, a pretty mature, pretty worldly young guy that, um, uh, you know, he'll probably tackle the coaching profession or the basketball in some sense. Uh, but I think all those, all those things have helped him. I, you know, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of him and, and yet, you know, I knew what I knew. I provide some, some. Cha I provided some challenges, but man, he's handled it like a like a champion. You just kind of mentioned what I was going to ask. Have you guys talked about coaching together in the future? We haven't had that specifically. Um, you know, I've got really. You know, sometimes sometimes you get to a point where you kind of, you know, his mother will disagree. You need to get away, you know, and you need to go see see and do some other things. Um, I know what his passion is. I know what it, I mean, we, we talk ball, we watch film, you know, the other night after the Ohio state games, he, he comes up and sits with me on the plane and watches a game with me. Uh, we talk ball, he talks it with all of our coaches. Uh, he talks it with everybody who will, who, who will put up with a kid coming up, asking questions and, uh, you know, he, old coaches that I've had, uh, he, he calls, he talks to. So I know that's what he's going to do. We'll have to see how his career. Um, he, he needs he needs to go struggle, and I, I mean that in a good way. He needs to go find out what this business is like, and it's it's not all uh, it's not all roses. It's not all you know coaching at Illinois. You know it's Dodge City Community College on a twelve thousand dollars salary, and 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 figuring out you know how, how you're going to how you're going to eat and where you're going to recruit and you know, having to pull across, pull on the side of the road and take a nap because you're tired and it's two o'clock in the morning. So uh, he needs some of that in his life. Uh, and this is a game, Iowa, the scuffle at the end of the last game, playing for the double by senior day. How do you guys keep all of that in check and still come out and perform? Well, they're, they're really good. And, it, you know, my opinion, you know, they've, they've got the best player in our league or they've been the most consistently really good player. I don't know how many, I think he's 20. 20 or 21 games over 20. Um, you know, Luke is going to get points. Um, you know, we were we were right there. We had a four-point lead with five to go in last time. 
I don't think any of the uh, those other distractions will will bother us. I think it's it's a it'll, it'll be about the game once the ball gets tipped, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know we've we didn't stop in the last five minutes. We committed silly fouls and and uh, uh, Wieskamp and Frederick made made some shots and and, and hurt us. But uh, uh, you know we've got to be better than we were the first time if if uh, if we want to win tomorrow. You mentioned how um, Kipper and his roles have just evolved throughout his career at Illinois, but how has just your two's relationship just evolved since you first got here and uh, first started to, uh, just talking to Kipper and then just to see him walk on senior day uh, tomorrow? Just how has that relationship yeah, it's, evolved? Yeah, it's, it's evolved. There's no question. And, I, you know, I think everybody would know that I challenged Kipper a lot the first year. And, and you've got to find out what people are about. And you've got to find out, uh, you know, especially when you take over, you know, Who's with you and who's against you? Who's both feet in? And and Kipper's always been that. And uh, um, you know, I think it's uh, it makes it more special for me to see. You know, hey, he, he's 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 one of us. He's 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 one of mine. You know, and he's he's going to be that guy that can pick up the phone and and call and know that he's got help however he needs it. And uh, um, you know, I think that's part of the special part anyway of being a college athlete. You get pushed, you get, you, you, you expand your boundaries, you get pushed beyond your boundaries. And, and, and I did that with Kip. And, uh, you know, I think there's uh, tremendous loyalty on my part towards him and tremendous trust towards him. And, and uh, um, I'm, I'm ecstatic for him, man. It's, 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 it's fun, he, he, there's, a re, there's a reason I enjoy that smile, and uh, uh, you know he's he he and I have a, a great great relationship. Well, I, I don't want him to smile at the other team, you know. Uh, I think that's, but yeah, I mean Kipper is who he is, and you know I, that 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 quality is going to last a lifetime for him, and and I think that's why. You know, Kipper's the guy that uh, that that everybody likes, and uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Is there anything you can take from Thursday's game with Ohio State, big man that can stretch the floor, shooters around it, and apply that tomorrow with an Iowa team that's at least kind of bare bones wise pretty similar? Well, we got a rebound. I you know I think that's the one thing that that um, frustrated me the most about Thursday was was. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, boy, we just we we just stood. I mean, we did uh, we didn't pursue balls, and that goes from not just Kofi. That goes from Io to Trent. To, uh, we've been pulling, we've been chasing down all those balls, and uh, we didn't do that. Uh, we were great. You know, we took one of the hottest three point shooting teams. And they had, they made three from three, and uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't they hurt us from twos. It was our passiveness. And I mean, literally passiveness on the defensive end, which created all the fouls. And we we just we weren't we weren't aggressive. We were a step late. We weren't uh, we weren't flying around, and that put us in in a bad spot both on the glass and and it put us in a bad spot in terms of fouling. And and when you foul, uh, you know, like I said, I think on twelfth, thirteenth in the country and the fewest fouls. And uh, that's going to be a big key tomorrow. You look at you look at Iowa and. You don't want to put them on the line because they make free throws at a high clip. On the chance this is his last game at State Farm Center, if somebody asked you what it was like to coach Iowa or what do I need to know about what it was like to coach Iowa, what would be your answer? Iowa's a, I, I mean, it's a, that's a blessing. I mean, it's, it's fun to coach guys that are really talented. It's fun to coach guys that, that work as hard as he works. It's, uh, uh, you know, I, I've said this. You know, I was a unique guy, and, and there, there's very few social habits. His life is basketball, and uh, uh, he he works extremely hard at, at at basketball. And you you love that commitment. You love that dedication. And and you know, here's a guy that's uh, uh, believes in the University of Illinois and has has believed in our coaches and our program and and. Uh, uh, you know, we'll uh, see where that goes from there. I know you enjoy hypotheticals and looking down the road, but oh yeah, they're my <laughs> they're my favorite pipe. Yeah, I just really in the case that it is, 
his last game. Did you say anything different to him going into a game like this? Nope. 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 Just do what you do, man. One more. I want to ask about Andres. I know he was signed to go to USF with Orlando, so he had he knew everything about him. But for you, when was the first time you saw him? Do you remember that and uh, your first impressions of him when you got to see him? Yeah, it was at his junior college practice. It was 20 minutes before. I'm sitting down on the side of the court, and he's got a freshman big man that he is working pick and rolls with by himself, throwing lobs to him. And... Uh, uh, I kept going to, oh, I said, is he doing that for himself or he's doing, and he goes, no, no, no. He said, that's helping that, help, 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 helping that big kid. And I mean, he was coaching him on planting his top foot and sprinting out of it. And, and, uh, you're like, you know, you, 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 I'll never forget it. I mean, it was, that's a, that's an incredible first impression. Then you watch his practice. And I mean, he, he literally ran the practice and was, was, Telling guys what we're running and what we're doing, and defensively rotations, and I mean, he was—you you saw his maturity level, you saw his IQ, uh, his leadership abilities, and that's stood out in a in a in a very positive way. So, if one game left for everybody in the Big Ten, is it fitting, maybe for this season in particular, that there are still 128 different scenarios where the seedings can I'm shake you, out? I'm glad you know that. Um, Probably fitting, probably fitting the way as good as this league is and as this league's gone and, you know, it's I, – I can't – it's it, it's it's interesting. I mean, there's no doubt we're by far and away the best league and I, you, I don't care who you – what other team in the country you put in this league, they're going to be in the same situation that all 10, 12, 14 of us are in. I mean, and, and – you're going to have losses. You're going to get beat. And, and everybody's gone through those ups and downs, and it's only fitting that, you know, we'll start seeing some, some, some games today and tomorrow, and, and we'll all figure it out late Sunday night or Monday morning. And, and then it wouldn't surprise me if anybody in this league could win in Indianapolis. It wouldn't shock me. Uh, there's, it's, it's that kind of year, that kind of league, and it makes it exciting.